Today, Chig Conservationist interviews a true legend. Dr. Birite Mary Galakas has been studying orangutans for over four decades and is considered the foremost leader in orangutan research. Dr. Galakas, along with Diane Fossey and Jane Goodall, were known as the primates, who changed primatology research forever by living among them and studying them in the wild. Hi, my name's Jack. I'm the Kid Conservationist and I'm the Youth Ambassador for Orangutan Alliance. And I'm honored to be here today with Dr. Galdekes, founder of Orangutan Foundation International and the leading primatologist of orangutans. Hi, Dr. Galdekes. Hi, Jack. So what made you want to start an orangutan rehabilitation center? Well, I started uh our rehabilitation program in 1971 and I went to Borneo to study orangutans but my desire was also to help protect them. When I first went into the field, um, conservationists and others supposed, they didn't really know, that there were only 5,000 wild orangutans left on the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. So we all wow. knew that orangutans were in grave danger of extinction. As it turned out, uh, the 5,000 figure was wrong. I went to study them, went to study orangutans, but I also wanted to help protect them and to save them from extinction. And that's why I started our rehabilitation program in 1971. Orangutans are clever, silly, and smart animals. In my National Geographic Kids magazine, I saw Princess the Orangutan borrow a boat. Uh, have you had any other silly encounters, such as this one? Well, I wouldn't call them silly. I, I, <laughs> they may seem silly from a human point of view, but I don't really think they're silly. What they do is they indicate how smart orangutans are, and there are so many incidences that, I mean, I, I could tell you about Sabina, you know, who took uh, took uh, some volunteers' makeup and painted huh. face with them. I can tell you about Princess. Of course, Princess was a very smart orangutan who uh, was able to steal a key and after much manipulation, actually open a door. Wow. Yeah, wow. They're incredibly smart animals. Yeah. So you, Jane Goodall, and Diane Fossey are known as the primates, uh, three women who studied and lived among primates under Louis Leakey. What does it feel like being the first to study orangutans in the wild? So when I went into the field, there were a few people who had gone before, and they had stayed uh, up to a year studying orangutans but they were not able to get very close to them. They had difficulty habituating them. I was the pioneer because I went to study orangutans and I stayed. I've been there now for almost 50 years. I habituated orangutans, uh, got to know them, saw them from, in a few cases now, from birth almost to death. I haven't been there long enough to actually see birth to death, but uh, I've certainly seen some of the orangutans that I knew in 1971 and 1972, and I'm talking about wild orangutans now, uh, die. So what we did is we pioneered long-term longitudinal studies of great ape lifetimes. So through my fundraising with Orangutan Alliance, we adopted orangutans uh, with oh, Orangutan Foundation International. We adopted nine orangutans, and Amelia was one of them. Her x-rays show her bones were bent in unnatural ways because she was kept in a cage that was too small for her. Does this happen a lot, and how is she doing now, two years after she came into your care? Well, it happens a bit. It happens a little, a little bit. Uh, I've seen it before, and in her case, she survived. She's doing very well. Uh, initially, she was a little bit wild, and, and this is a, a captive animal. So it's not usual that animals who have been in captivity since infancy are you know, wild, not used to the human uh, uh, gaze and the human touch, but uh, she was like that. But over the two years, she has uh, 
habituated a little bit to humans. Uh, initially, she was a little bit solitary. She didn't want to engage with the other orangutan infants. Now she's become much more social with other orangutans, and she doesn't seem totally fearful of human beings. So she's doing well. Uh, I'm so glad to hear that she's doing well and that she's come a long way. That's incredible. So another reason that, um, one, one of the reasons that orangutans are um, disappearing is because they're being kept in cages such as Amelia. Another one is palm oil. Palm oil is causing orangutans homes to be cut and burned down. I'm educating and spreading awareness of this through my YouTube channel and pre presentations. What can I and other kids and adults really do about this? Is this the most important way to help protect the orangutans? Certainly, it is one of the most important ways to protect orangutans. Um, it's not just palm oil, but the palm oil is a major factor in Borneo, or the major factor in Borneo. It's also uh, pulp and paper estates that have been established uh, after forest has been cut and burned for pulp and paper. So one of the things that kids can do, and anybody can do, and everybody can do, and I'm absolutely fastidious about this, is recycle and reuse paper. Because some of that paper that comes out of the timber estates uh, for pulp and paper um, are, you know, are made into paper and are sold in the United States and Europe and China and everywhere in the world. So recycle paper. But getting back to palm oil, please, when you go to the supermarket, if you see palm oil on the can or the label or the package, don't buy it. Because no matter what they tell you, even if it says sustainable palm oil, what that means is still dubious. Because if you establish a palm oil plantation on a forest that you have cut down and burned, and where you've evicted the animals and taken the land away from the local and indigenous people, it doesn't matter what happens 20 or 30 years later, your palm oil plantation is not sustainable. It's only sustainable if it's established on land where forest has not been cut down. Well, I'm incredibly honored to be able to talk orangutans and how to save them with you. And thank you. Do you have any last message for kids who want to help orangutans? Well, I think by helping ameliorate climate change, we help not only humans, but we also help the future of orangutans and all great apes. We're all facing this together. And what happens to orangutans indicates what's going to happen to humans as well. That's very true. And I think that's really things that everybody should need to know. And in 2021, I have a trip planned to Borneo to see orangutans in the wild. And hopefully I get to meet you. And I hope. I hope that you're able to visit in 2021. And thank you for caring about the earth and orangutans. Thank you for the great work you do. Dr. Galdacas's work has been one of my biggest inspirations. Talking with her meant everything to me. And I am now proud to call her my friend.